While extended release buprenorphine has indeed proven to be a game changer for so many patients with opioid use disorder, there are many patients for whom that standard 300, 300, 100 milligram regimen proposed by the manufacturers of Sublicade, for example, may not be sufficient or adequate. So let's take a look at a real world example where modifying that initial regimen proved to be essential to stabilizing the patient. Ms. C is our 61 year old woman with an extensive history of opioid use disorder, snorting around five to 10 bags of pure fentanyl on a daily basis. After an initial successful transition to sublingual buprenorphine, she starts missing appointments on occasion and reports intermittently running out of her sublingual buprenorphine while using varying quantities of fentanyl between visits. I think we can all agree that this is a perilous situation. With fluctuating levels of buprenorphine and fentanyl in her bloodstream from one week to the next, which makes all of us exceedingly nervous. She identifies transportation as one of the primary barriers to ensuring that she gets to her visits and gets stabilized. You convince her to give extended release buprenorphine a try, and she welcomes it. You start her off with Sublicade's 300 milligram dose per the usual protocol. She does well, though. After a few weeks, she reports a return of cravings towards the end of that first four-week cycle and a return towards fentanyl use. You happily call in a few extra sublingual films in anticipation of her next injection. She presents for that second injection. You again give her 300 milligrams per protocol. But again, towards the end of the month, she's reporting having increased cravings, using fentanyl intermittently, and again, you decide to give her some more sublingual films to use as needed prior to her third injection. So when she presents for that third injection, per protocol, we would have given her a 100 milligram dose. So what do we do in this case? Well, the reality is that the standard regimen for sublicade of 300, 300, and 100 may simply not work for all patients. In fact, one real-world study of 40 patients suggested that as few as one quarter of patients achieve stability on that standard regimen. The remainder required some nuanced approaches with the use of alternative dosing strategies or supplemental sublingual buprenorphine on top of the standard extended-release buprenorphine regimen. Let's take a closer look at what we can expect from the standard regimen. In general, patients do very well on extended-release buprenorphine. In this observational study, for example, of 365 patients, treatment with buprenorphine extended release monthly injections for up to 12 months led to positive patient-centered outcomes and high treatment satisfaction, which correlated in this study with personal recovery. If we look at the expected pharmacokinetics of extended release buprenorphine from phase three trials, we know that this regimen typically yields a plasma buprenorphine level of two to three nanograms per milliliter. We also know that getting above that two nanogram per milliliter level protects patients against respiratory depression and overdose. Patients in this first figure were administered a placebo, followed by varying amounts of fentanyl. As the amount of fentanyl went up, the ventilation rate, shown on the y-axis, went progressively down. In contrast, patients in the figure on the right all had a plasma buprenorphine level of greater than two nanograms per deciliter. And as you can see, IV fentanyl, regardless of dose, had little, if any, effect on ventilation rate. However, there's also evidence that drug liking, that is, how much did a recipient report experiencing some degree of pleasure or euphoria when injecting up to 18 milligrams of hydromorphone, is not fully suppressed until plasma buprenorphine levels exceeded 5 nanograms per milliliter. In this figure, the y-axis represents drug liking when receiving 18 milligrams of IV hydromorphone. As we move towards the right, towards higher plasma buprenorphine levels shown on the x-axis, we can see that drug liking is not really fully suppressed until patients had plasma buprenorphine levels of 5 nanograms per milliliter or greater. So with the potency of fentanyl analogs, it's likely that patients on the standard regimen will still experience some degree of euphoria when injecting fentanyl, which, while it may not lead to respiratory suppression, it nonetheless reinforces cravings and ongoing illicit drug use. 
In the red boxes on this table, we can see the average plasma buprenorphine level for patients on a 100 milligram maintenance dose compared with a 300 milligram maintenance dose of sublocate. The bottom line for patients who continue to struggle on a 100 milligram dose is that we need to consider either supplemental sublingual buprenorphine or transitioning to a 300 milligram maintenance dose. Indeed, for patients who are on 24 milligrams of sublingual buprenorphine at baseline, the 300 milligram maintenance dose is recommended by the manufacturer. With all that in mind, open lines of communication and patient centeredness are critical during the early phases of extended release buprenorphine. It's important to let patients know that they may not feel 100% after that first month, that it's normal to have uncontrolled cravings to use, especially towards the end of the month. Patients should be encouraged to call the clinic if they need help with withdrawal symptoms and cravings. And knowing that trough plasma buprenorphine level, it's completely reasonable to use supplemental sublingual buprenorphine during those early months. If patients continue having cravings, simply maintain the 300 milligram dose. Plasma buprenorphine levels are expected to continue to rise for four or five months while on high dose extended release buprenorphine, whether using Sublocade or Brixati. So most patients should find that their cravings will get better controlled with each subsequent shot. So revisiting our case, after validating Ms. C's reported cravings and ongoing opioid use, you agree to provide eight milligram sublingual strips to use as needed in the third and fourth weeks prior to each injection. You also opt to continue 300 milligram doses indefinitely. Now, she continued in our case to snort two to four bags of fentanyl daily, but she reports that she rarely feels any effect from using and frankly, isn't sure why she continues to use. Either way, I know that she is safe from overdose and she's fully engaged in treatment, which are really my top two priorities.